This week on the podcast, we have Tyler Amendolari. He recently finished his first 50K a couple months ago at the Saddler's Creek Stumble. And we got together to talk about nutrition and training and the race and just how running can make your everyday life so much better. It was a great conversation, and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Eat Well, Sleep Great, Run Far podcast. My name is Will Franz, and I'm here to help you go farther, faster, and longer without injuries, gut problems, or giving up your favorite foods. All right, this week on the podcast, I have Tyler Amendolari. He is an athlete I've been coaching for a few months now, and he recently just ran his first 50K. And Tyler, good to have you here. What got you into running and ultra running and this like crazy sport? Uh, I don't know. I'd say typical, but I, don't know, I guess all the podcasts you listen to, everybody's stories are so completely different. So maybe not typical, but uh, not a runner and growing up, played you know regular sports, et cetera. But to get more recently, um, went to a military college and still wasn't a runner then. Um, I ran because I had to. Um, Graduated college, fast forward 10 years, uh, last, uh, last September, um, my wife was like, we should run the Thanksgiving day 5k. I was like, you know, um, but of course we ended up doing it, but uh, yeah. so I went out for kind of a training run, trying to speed us up. Um, I went out for my first run and it scared me. Um, I couldn't even run around the block and I'm like, I'm low thirties and like I struggled to literally just run around the block and, you know, coming from, you know, sports kind of, you know, rec sports, but, you know, growing up being active, I was like, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So I wanted to do better, but my, my thought was just kind of, um, I just want to be able to have the fitness level to when a 5k comes up, I can just go run the 5k with like friends or people from work. Um, but during that process, I uh, kind of figured out I actually enjoy this. Um, and another thing that I enjoy doing it um, then and still now is uh, backpacking. Well, the problem with that is my wife stays home with our three kids. I'm gone all week with work and I can't come home and go, oh, I know you're with the kids all week, but now I'm going to be gone for two or three days in the woods. Um, so I somehow mesh those. I'm enjoying running. I enjoy yeah. the backpacking. I meshed them into trail running. And luckily I live in the upstate of South Carolina, uh, Greenville, Pickens, Anderson, that area. And uh, there's a lot of uh, wonderful state parks. We've got um, some close parks up in North Carolina too, uh, that are awesome for trail running. So that's kind of how I got into it. That's awesome, dude. And you mm -hmm. say you did like regular sports in, in when you were growing up, what were, what do you used to play? Uh, soccer primarily. Got it. That makes a bunch of sense. So it's not like, an outstanding player. I just stopped when we got the high school level. And sure, I do think that like different sports background provides like often a lot of stability and stuff, so you don't get it turned ankles and whatnot when you're running through the woods. So if you're like looking to go for, if you were like starting running a five k on a whim and like trying to figure out how to make that better, what were you doing? to like initiate that journey and try and increase your running prowess? Uh, just went out there and like uh, most people just tried to run as hard and fast as I could. And I remember walking in like every morning that I was doing that and be like, and telling, you know, uh, my wife, I just ran X mile. I just ran. I finally, it took me a while, but I built up to three miles and I'd come in and every time be like I did it in this time, I did it in this time. Cause I thought, you know, you had to run it. You had to run it fast and as fast, which my fast, you know, that's, I guess it's all relative, but was faster yeah. within the last time. And, but as I kind of got more and more into trail running and longer distances, I kind of learned to slow down. It makes it more enjoyable and you can go further. That's cool, dude. Yeah. So I know like you just did your 50 K your first one. What race did you do? 
Uh, it's called the Saddler's Creek Stumble, um, and it's uh, put on by a group here in South Carolina. It's called Upstate Ultra um, for the upstate of South Carolina. Um, and Saddler's Creek is a state park here in uh, South upstate of South Carolina. That's right on uh, Lake Hartwell, which is the border of South Carolina and Georgia. Awesome little state park. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, I saw some of the pictures and it looked great. Like how how was the race? Uh, it was awesome. Um, pretty neat. Um, uh, it's kind of a loop course of around six point five, six point two, six point seven, depending on you know the description and who <laughs> and watches who's Garmin. That. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, so it was a loop course, and it went through the campground. So if you were camping there, you went right by your campsite, which we happened to be camping. So that was awesome. I set up my own little aid station there, and um, which was at my running pace about 10 minutes from the finish line or the start finish line. So um, that worked out great. And pretty cool Hartwell right now. The Lake Hartwell's the, it's really low, so they kind of changed the course up a little bit so we could run on one of the islands that was now accessible. So that was really cool too. That's super cool, dude. Oh, yeah. And you say you were camping there. Like how how was that camping – around running that far like i'm sure the night before it wasn't that big of a deal but afterwards like did you struggle yeah. with, like sleep or anything on the ground um the biggest struggle the night afterwards was actually i had uh, my two sons uh, who are six and four and they had to go to the bathroom like three times that night and i think i walked them to the bathroom one time and after that i'm like man just just pee out the tent like i know and so there's also not just the 50k that i ran there was also a 30 hour race that was going on so there's still people running around us like all night long um but i was just like you're you're young it's dark and well to be quite honest you're the boy so the bo- the world yeah. is your girl so uh, <laughs> to go so they just stepped out there outside and uh them waking me up was kind of the roughest part but sleep wise man i knocked out um, that's awesome dude yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you did that much work that you're just torched. Uh, so, yeah. All I could think about, though, they're laying – there were two guys uh, in the campsite next to me that were running 30-hour. And all I could think was after they're done, they still have to pack up camp. Like, I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, that sounds kind of miserable. Like, you know, have to to run that far and then have to pack it up. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. that. Yeah, but it was good. My wife ran uh, the 10K. So my race was Saturday and Sunday. Uh, well, we were setting up Friday and uh, we were talking about um, that there was a race on Sunday for a 10K. And my wife's starting to get more into running a little bit and she'd never done a trail race. And um, she was kind of like back and forth on doing it. And she just decided I'm going to do it. So she signed up. So that was cool. They, uh, I stayed out there Friday night by myself, Saturday, woke up, ran, they came out, um, probably about my last lap or so. Um, so they got to be there at the finish, which was really cool to see my, my, my three kids out, out there. And, uh, especially the boys, they've always, they've been my, my little training partners. Uh, my six year old, uh, when we go, when I go run around the neighborhood, he'll ride his bike with me and stuff. So that's always fun. And so they got to be there at the finish. And, uh, but yeah, so she came back, she brought them the, our daughter out and her on Sunday. Um, and she ran the 10 K and I kind of packed up camp while she was running. That's awesome, dude. And uh, like, if you're looking at, I don't know, it sounds like your wife kind of got you into running initially for that Thanksgiving 5k. Um, yeah. And it's kind of cool that you were able to like get her into the trails as well. Did she like it? Oh, uh, she loved it. Yeah. Her, uh, her first words after she crossed the finish line, like, how was it? And she's like, I freaking loved it. Like, or it was freaking awesome. Uh, was her first words after crossing. Um, but the, the races those guys put on their upstate ultras, um, Matt Hammersmith and, and Jay and, you know, the whole group of them, like, they put on awesome races, like great community. And, um, uh, but in the places they choose and stuff are really, really cool to, and, uh, to check out. And I love the state park stuff because it kind of, for us, you know, with kids, it kind of opens up our eyes to other places we may not have taken been before and stuff. So, uh, like we did a half marathon a few months before that, and I'd never been to Jones Gap State Park, and that's yeah. where the half marathon was. And took the kids out there, and we'll definitely be going back there again. That's super cool, dude. That's really uh, awesome. 
And I'll definitely like link if I can find their website in the in the show notes for anybody who's oh. in your area. But if you so that was your first fifty k, you did yeah. well. Like, um, what did you learn from it? How was it? Uh, it was awesome. Um, I don't know if we'll touch on it later, but you know, the kind of went into it uh, with an injury. Or do you want me? To, I can hold off on that. And no, that's fine. Hit it up. Yeah, it's just just free flow. Yeah. We're good. All right. So, um, as you know, I kind of, I strained my calf a couple of weeks before it, um, and kind of took a little time off and kind of babied it, um, up until the race and was back and forth, back and forth on whether or not I was still going to do it. Um, ultimately, um, well, you suggested, uh, hitting up, uh, Brody. Um, so I gave him a shout and talked with him a little bit, talked with you, talked with some other folks here locally. Uh, and it was kind of you know, balls in your court, whatever. So anyways, decided, Best case scenario is um, everything goes well, it, you know, pain free, and I and I do set out and accomplish my goal. Worst case scenario is absolutely beautiful weather. I you know, so I was thinking worst case is it hurts. I go, it's not happening. I call it and I call my wife and say, hey, why don't y'all come out early? I'm done for the day. Let's enjoy this beautiful weather um, and hang out with everybody there. So it ended up being awesome. Uh, the race was fun. Um, learn you know just uh pacing i thought i did pretty good for my pacing um i was back and forth on how i was going to go out um because in the the half marathon a few weeks before uh months before um i went out slow um and i kind of regretted that a little bit because i got stuck behind you know some of the some folks but i knew this was a different kind of race and different trails and stuff like that um but yeah my uh, fueling was on. I thought I did pretty good on that. And, uh, it was fun, uh, talking with the, the other runners talk. With, this is my first, but I was talking with people who this was their 25th and, you know, and it was, that was pretty cool. That's nuts, dude. That's super cool. Did any of those like veterans have anything to share with you as far as like tips and stuff? Um, they kind of just talking about the races they've done. And, um, a few of them, uh, one guy, um, was from out of state, but he's, you know, he just said he absolutely loves the races that um, Upstate Ultra puts on. So he always tries to go there um, and, and make as many of their races as he can. Um, but um, no, nah, they just you know, have fun and, you know, enjoy it. And that's what I did. It's awesome, dude. Yeah. So for, I know also that part of that risk mitigation strategy, because we know races can be expensive. Like you had a free entry to this for volunteering, right? Yeah, so that's another awesome thing about uh, the Upstate Ultra Group um, is you can volunteer at a at a race and uh, you can earn um, a free entry in a future race, which is excellent for me because one, I'm very frugal and I do not like to spend money. Um, but really, I mean, financially, again, um, uh, my wife stays home with our three kids, so we have. Uh, she does do um, a fitness thing on the side, but, um, you know, one income, um, basically. So anytime we can have a chance to, um, and actually that volunteering thing was re really one of the ways that really kind of pushed me to kind of dive further in this is just being around that, that group and community and how just awesome it is. Um, and what, what they kind of stand for, you know, giving back and, um, the community and, you know, just really taking care of all those state parks and, uh, local areas. Same. And I mean, I, the race I'm doing next week is probably be done by the time this comes out, but it was because I had a free entry. I went for this, like a lot of, a lot of race places or companies do that. So if you're just getting into it and you are worried about the cost or whatever, like go volunteer to race, you'll learn a lot. It's great. You'll meet good people. And then you can, you know, get free entries down the line too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. And even if, you know, you, aren't up to you know that speed or that 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 distance or whatever like i mean really you go that was eye-opening the first way race i volunteered at was the ultra runners or runners in general you know come in all shapes and sizes i mean it it, it that was cool just to you know it's like man that person's killing it you know and yeah. it's not about everything and stuff like that it's you know anyways but yeah, uh, volunteering was really cool. It was good to meet people and uh, kind of just see what, what it was about without first towing the line, I guess, if you will. I got to kind of just sit back, watch, and see what – I've never done a race like that before. For real, man. I mean, I really do think that 
I don't know, mandatory is a strong word, but yeah, I would highly advise people volunteering at some of these longer distances before you yeah. actually do them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you're right. Uh, you'll see so much stuff. One, you'll see what like nutrition works for people, what doesn't, because you're yeah. going to be helping them deal with it. You're going to see what's been going wrong. Um, you will learn that someone who you might see in a grocery store and would never expect anything from will kick your ass at 50, at 50 K, right. <laughs> Which is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll also like get to be, I don't know. It's always a fun day. Like you're never alone. You get to do great stuff. You're often cook quesadillas. It's a fun time. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Getting to talk with people that are actually out there doing this, you know, not, um, some ad that pops up on your Instagram or Facebook feed suggesting this product, you know, you're seeing out there, these guys that actually, you know, and girls that are actually using whatever it is they're using. And you can ask them, Hey, why did you choose that kind of thing? And, or whatever. Real. And I mean, I, I mean, we know I'm a, I'm a coach. Nobody listening to this is that shouldn't be news unless this is your first one. But like, I think that at least some sort of mentorship is, helpful in this sport uh, it's a crazy sport right so yeah. like i've been coaching myself through this for experimentation purposes and like getting better at my job but i have leveraged david terrio and the ultra runner guys and like all these people and their wisdom to like get through some of the stuff that i couldn't figure out you have to have some mentorship when you're trying to do this stuff to your body it's rough man. yeah 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 i love those those uh two podcasts are there and those guys uh they're awesome great resource and yeah and again i keep going back to it but uh the part of the upstate ultra is what's called the scum or i guess they're separate but the same um there's a south carolina ultra marathon group so the scum club is what they're called um and some um anyways but there's um, ambassadors, I guess, if you will, for that group, for this group. And you can, you know, I've gotten to know several of them. So I've kind of reached out to them, you know, on, you know, fueling and stuff like that and just about races. And uh, some of them will, you know, will try to encourage you to do, buy, I would say, bite off a little more than you can chew, but uh, just because they're so passionate about uh, the race, but, um, and, or the events. So, uh, uh, but, oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying any advice you get good advice. Like, geez, yeah. just go on to the, a couple of the Facebook groups and you'll see it. But like, if you ask repeatedly, you'll at least see some like themes come up that can, you know, uh, you can associate with and figure out what's going on. Yeah. So like we talked nutrition briefly, like what worked for you on the race? That's always a big, big topic of conversation and like how that goes. Um, yeah. So um, the race organization, organizers um have a aid station they set up themselves and it has stuff you can use and um they have i guess an affiliation or whatever with uh tailwind so they provide it um so i kind of knew that going in um but i kind of had read before you know and talked with you and other sources of you know maybe good to kind of practice what will obviously practice what you're going to use but you might want to not rely on everything you know just because you you don't know what may run out or how it may sit with you anyways um so i ended up in that race actually um you know um uh, backtrack so i kind of wanted to kind of keep it real more of a real food kind of thing and i tried you know this i tried literally everything while um, training so just yeah. kind of what worked what didn't work and knock on wood i never had a bad issue with or uh with anything i tried um, now I, I will say, you know, some of it probably is also the, the intensity level at which I'm running, which is a lot lower than, you know, the front runner. So that I mean, I sure I, dude, but like, I, I got, I saw your heart rate data, like it, you, you were, you're pushing it as much as anybody else. Some of us just have like different digestion and stomach and whatever. Right. Like yeah. I, I can eat it pretty much anything unless I'm running and like, you can eat pretty much anything when you're running. That's great, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I ended up falling on, um, starting out, um, shooting for around 250 calories and about 55 grams of carbs. Um, and I kind of figured out, uh, a good like balance of fig Newtons or fig bars and dates. Um, so I ate that for, um, typically every 15, 20 minutes or so I'd pop one, chew one or whatever. Um, and that's what I kind of ran with for first two thirds, I guess, of the race. 
Uh, but I also noticed like during that, I was kind of losing track of because I and I probably should figure this out. And I didn't have a timer set up on my watch to kind of keep me. I would just kind of like glance and look. Well, yeah, you know, you're running is. for a good time. You're talking with people. And I realized, oh, no, has 15 minutes gone by? Like It's 45. But did I eat at 30 or did I eat at 15, you know, or whatever? And so when that started happening, I didn't want to get behind. Um, so I switched the last two two laps, I think it was to uh spring energy um used the awesome sauce um and the canterbury um yeah so used those last two laps and then while at the my aid station um i was craving chips man and i those chips were delicious they're just i don't know some off-brand kettle cook kind of chips and um yeah, I could have sat there all day eating those chips. They were just, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, they were absolutely delicious at that moment in time. Um, yeah. I mean, I I love a potato chip. It, 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 I think people should try them at an aid station a lot of the time, unless you know that they don't work for you. And I also wouldn't eat a ton. Super high in fat. Like, don't fat bomb yourself unless you're, yeah. like, used to doing that. But, I mean, one, they taste good. They're a comfort food. And... If you're pretty late in the race, the fat's not going to screw you over as much. And they're usually really salty. So you can see if you're screwing up your sodium. Right. They're great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. It sounds like everything was working really well for you. Like uh, you, you were kind of training for this for better part of a year, more or less. Right. Cause you and I talked, I don't know, last October and you were yeah. doing some really good, like low heart rate training. And then you'd race this October yeah um so i kind of got on a little health kick um before that um before you and i had ever met and everything and i think we actually first talked literally right as i was starting to run and i had done uh keto like the six months before and i was kind of transitioning out of that as i realized I forgot that i know everybody's got different opinions but i wanted to make it easier on myself and or whatever so carbs were probably going to be a better idea to for yeah. running there are people out there that don't that can still do all the fat adapted etc anyways but everybody's uh, heard my opinion on that and if you don't yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to give that not now go ahead yeah <laughs> uh, yeah i think that's when you and i first met was um talking about how to transition out of that um and to get carbs and you know you kind of helped me do it incrementally and um uh yeah so that's when i'm uh Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I would say for anybody listening, just a real brief, like how did keto partially as a health thing? And then while training really low heart rate, so like very purely Maffetone method and like Bob C. Bahar's like nutritional periodization, there was not a lot of speed work. So like it wasn't dumb. <laughs> it, it worked fairly well. That is the problem with that training though, is that they're, they're that like nutritional strategy is that's the training that has to match it right and then when we started working he wanted to get faster so we were starting to work a little more speed into it and that's why we started to like really add the carbs right also just because they taste good but yeah yeah i'm sorry and i, I guess i kind of skipped that's how you know we got to where, where the training yeah. was but started just kind of um didn't have a plan or anything just kind of literally uh printed out um calendars and we write you know i've listened yeah. to podcasts and listen you know bits in here and mm -hmm. you know, kind of i think it was like a lot of people recommend the 10 percent rule and stuff like that so i kind of started mapping it out on a calendar as well i'd miss a day so i'd have to go in a race and do this or um, something for work would pop up so i'd have to race and anyways so yeah i was i think i was able to build up a solid base before um started working with you um yeah for sure like a, kind of uh transition i'd started i built that base up and you know once we kind of uh I started working with you you know you kind of help guide my my path and throw some speed work because i i knew i needed to add some in there but my idea of that was like okay on this run i'll just run uh, a 5k really fast today like that was my i mean uh idea of, and i didn't even do that every week because yeah i, want to. I just wanted to, i love that low and slow man it's just fun out there just kind of uh, spending time in your thoughts. Yeah, man, I get that. And I mean, you and I've been working together since uh, June, July, something, something like that. My recollection of starting dates is always terrible. Um, mm -hmm. But how, 
How was having a coach? Do what? How was like having a coach? How was that? Uh, it was awesome. You know, there's, there's the internet's a awesome thing, but it's also terrible because you can <laughs> ask an opinion and it'll look like a seven point star or whatever of what, you know, which way to go. And um, so having a coach, you know, that you can go to and um, provide, you know, as long as you trust them or whatever, you just kind of put your you know trust in what, what he or she is saying and, you know, just kind of go to them and you and I, like we just talked before this on my plan next, like we pretty much had the same idea. So it was nice to get that affirmation or reaffirmation of, uh, you know, what I'm thinking is in line or, um, you know, and talking about, you know, the hydration beforehand, I was, uh, you know, drinking a little little less than I should have been. And, uh, you push my hydration and, you know, the whole, uh, uh, you know, salt intake and stuff, you know, definitely eye opening on that and everything. So, uh, it was great, uh, working with a coach. It kind of, again, just gets you going. And as, um, the, I love the plan. Like I love being able to, I got the email the night before from training peaks and I could look the night before. And like, I absolutely love seeing that on there, that, that calendar on there and knowing what I was going to do next. And I didn't, I didn't have to do it. I do anything about it. I didn't have to think about it. I just kind of, well, that's what I'm doing. And I went out there and did it. And, uh, and then working through the injuries, it was nice having somebody to yeah. work through those, you know, with, um, you know, outside of medical folks, but you also, yeah. you, know, you also had my best interest in mind, um, my health in mind, you know, for, you know, rather than just, no, push through it. You might want to go talk with somebody and get that get get that looked at. You know, the kind of thing. So that was also one of the best parts of uh, you know having somebody to kind of bounce. I'm feeling this. What are your thoughts, kind of thing, and everything. Working working through the injuries and ultimately it worked. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, you, I don't know. I think you pulled it on that like speedy half marathon because you kind of sent it, which was great. I mean, it happens, but yeah, twinges are going to happen. Um, and yeah, I'm glad you like were able to schedule with a couple people and talk to them because I mean, I I'm fairly good at this stuff, but also you're a couple thousand miles away, and I can only guess that it's only a strain so much. It's nice to like have a, have a PT look at it too, and sure. they said the same thing. But there's always good to be safe than sorry. So especially since like as you said, you you got to work and you have three children and. Yeah, dude, for sure. So one thing I wanted to note in there for that you've done really well is like do the work and like pay attention and you've learned a ton. Like we were talking about what's next and I'll ask you about that in a second, but like Ty and I are taking like a bit of a pause from coaching because he's it's winter and it's going to be like strength time and he just doesn't need it for a minute. And I do truly believe that coaches should not keep you beholden to them. Like you should learn some things and that is something you've been really good at, dude. Like you have done the work to like study what your nutrition should look like. You always want to know why your training looks the way it does, which I'm more than happy to tell you. And when we were talking about what the next like, few weeks look like before your race on the on the 10th and then afterwards like same page because you have actually paid attention so it's legit dude you've done a great job appreciate it yeah so if we're looking at that like what is your your next race like what's after that what's the next like few months look like for you so right now got on the calendar um december 10th um it's the pow 50k prisoner of war 50k um it is um, at another state park here in South Carolina, um, put on by the same group, Upstate Ultra. Um, and it is um, uh, another loop course um, in, I think, it's seven, eight miles. Um, again, through the campground. I don't have a campsite right now. Um, I think they're all full, but I know I've noticed last time, like a bunch, like the days before, people were like giving them up or selling, you know, or offering theirs up because they couldn't make yeah. it. So keep an eye on that. Um, but um, if not, I'm, it's not far from the house, so I might just uh, you know drive out there that morning. But uh, yeah, it's at Croft State Park, which is um, I don't know the full history uh, off the top of my head, but it used to be um, 
maybe like old military um, uh, installation and or something like that. Uh, uh, probably should know that, but uh, uh, yeah, what the POW part, I guess, from or paying a little tribute to that. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's December 10th. Um, and between now and then kind of just took some time off and maintaining and I'll, uh, like I already told you, I had, uh, my LASIK, uh, on Friday redone, touched up, um, because it wasn't as good. So I'm kind of taking this weekend off. So my eyes can kind of, uh, rest a little bit, um, which I wish I didn't cause it's absolutely beautiful outside. And I wish I was out there running. Uh, my wife went for a run. I feel that very jealous that uh, she got to do that. And so I'm going to hopefully go tomorrow morning, maybe a nice little easy hour run. But, and after that, um, I don't know for certain, um, but we might be going out to Texas to visit my mother-in-law um, while the kids are on spring break. And I may or may not have already looked and there's a 50 K while I'm out there. That's just right down the road. So uh, might hit a, hit that up as well. May or may not be a good idea. Yeah, I yeah. Feel uh, but there is another one here in May. Um, it's the, uh, it's at a, a local rec park um, here, um, Woodstock 50K or something like that. Um, cool. But same group, Upstate Ultra. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome, dude. I'm glad you're like running through that. So kind of all I really had. You've done a great job. Glad your race went so well. And last thing I tend to ask is like anything else you want to make sure we cover or that you share with people before we hang up? Uh, yeah, sure. I know um, you're not a big gear person, but I know a lot of the new people are. Um, so I, Please I will do this. Yeah, I'm the worst at this. Definitely. People I should ask I people that. The biggest thing, the first thing is, even though I'm about to tell you what I use, don't use it because I used it. Go to a local store and get fitted and try things out, borrow stuff. Um, yeah. uh, but I ended up using ultra Lone peak fives and, uh, my socks were two year old darn tough socks. that I absolutely love, um, some cheap Reebok compression sorts from Wally world, uh, some cheap Academy shorts that I cut the liner out of. Um, and of course I had to wear my, um, scum club, South Carolina upstate, uh, South Carolina ultra marathon club, uh, shirt for the race. And for the vest was the Solomon, uh, advanced skin 12, uh, with the two 500 milliliter things up front. Um, how, that's awesome, dude. I mean, all that sounds really good. And if you had more, sorry, I was going to, I'm cutting you off. Cause I, how does that, how's that Solomon? You like it? Uh, I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It looks, now, now, the yeah. only one I had before that was the cheap, I don't even know how to pronounce it. The one off Amazon eight and John G oh, the end the, the NJ or whatever. That's like yeah, 20 bucks. And, yeah. Yeah. And those little, I don't even know if they're 250 milliliters or whatever, the little plastic, um, uh, bottles, little uh, flasky things. Yeah. Um, you're going to run out of that very quickly. And I didn't <laughs> have, so I brought a, uh, like a Sawyer squeeze and would filter water when I would go trail running. That gets annoying when you got to do it so much. Um, so I ended up, I was like, the longer I go, the more, um, but to get back to the, anyway, yeah, great vest. Um, and cool. anything else I could tell people is, um, it, anybody can go out here and do this. Um, if I can do this, anybody can do this. You can ask my college roommate from, uh, like when he found out I was running, like he was like, there's absolutely no <laughs> way. I, I still remember <laughs> our, Nob, you uh, uh, went to a military college in uh, Charleston, but we were in a formation run and both my legs cramped up and he'll tell this story. And I looked over him and I guess the look on my face was like, help me. And he looks at me and he's like, what the heck can I do for you? You know, that kind of thing. And, but so he, he knows I'm, I wasn't a runner. I'm not a runner. So big shock to him. But, um, you know, again, I work 40 plus hours a week, three kids, um, wonderful wife, um, and if I can make time for it, um, I guess it boils down to what's important to you. Um, yeah. so, and one of the best things that has come from this, um, was, you know, to make time, you only have 24 hours in a day, you got to find your priorities. So I was getting up and running because it became a priority. 
Um, but one of the best things that came from this was really my walk with, with God. Um, because I told myself, well, if I can get up early to, to do this for me, surely I can get up a little bit earlier and spend time with him. And so that's cool. I do my Bible study typically before I run. And then while I'm out on my run, I kind of have a little bit more discussion in my head and, uh, kind of what I just read and on the, out on the trails, I get to pray for the people I'm running by and running with, uh, um, and then I, don't know, I think through that, my marriage has just gotten even better. My relationship with my my kids, who I absolutely love, has gotten even better. Um, so that's been the real blessing in all of this is um, all of that. So that's really cool to see how God can use things in your life. Uh, and this just happened to be running and how he can kind of uh, you know, change change things, make things better. And uh, uh, the community there, too. So, um Speaking that's awesome, man. That's really cool. And like, just wanted to like drive that home when you are able to like take that time for yourself and prioritize, yeah. it just does elucidate so much of what really matters. And that's yeah. really cool. And whatever that may be to you, because yeah. like, yeah. I know we have a wide range of people listening to this and like, oh, yeah. doesn't, like, and everybody's different, but like whatever is important to you when you have to <laughs> figure out your schedule and you're able to take a little time like, I, I don't know how helps, man so on uh, one of the facebook reels that popped up the other day was an amazing illustration of this it was a uh, mason jar and the guy was asking the class the teacher um he put some balls in it some big golf balls and uh, he's like is this full and they're like yes well he puts in small rocks and fills it up more. He's like, is this full? And they're like, yes. Well, he puts in fine sand and fills it up. And he's like, is this full? And basically he was illustrating there's, there's, there's only so much room in that jar, but you put the most important things in first, you know, and then everything else kind of fills in in between. So whatever's most important to you, you know, whether it's your relationship with God, your family, your career or whatever, put those important things in first and all the other little fine things throughout the rest of your day will it'll make its way in there somehow, some way, but you got to get those, whatever's important in, to you in, into that jar, into that 24 hours first. Yeah, that's which for I sure. thought that was an awesome illustration, but uh, and the other big thing outside of anybody can do this is um, find a, if you have a local running community, um, get involved with them. Like I told you, man, the upstate ultras here uh, in South Carolina are awesome. The uh, folks that run it are amazing. Um, I met them like the first time, uh, the one time at that race I volunteered at and literally the next race, man, it was like, they knew me by name and it was just, I was like, man, there were like hundreds of people here last race and here, you, here they are talking to me like, you know, and, um, but, and they do a lot for the community. They're big into, you know, conservation and, but really, I guess all that, to uh, find a community, a local running community, and you can really kind of feed into that and, uh, enjoy it and everything um yeah yeah man that's awesome and i think like it helped uh, i don't know uh, it helps burn out it helps all these things it just helps you like stay attached to it without losing your mind so for sure yeah accountability and just friendships i, I think i was trying to get a, a guy i don't know if it's at work or another friend to do it he's like i've got enough friends i don't need any more friends i'm like man it's not about that <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny well thanks man i appreciate yeah. it yep. anything else no, um, cool. I will say what helped me really get up in the mornings just real quick was, man, I put my other phone with the alarm in the bed, in the bathroom, that alarm went off at 5 AM. And by the time I made those few strides to get there, it's like, you're up, man, you might as well go like set everything up the night before. That way there's no yeah. excuses to, to not do it like that. Yeah. I used to, the alarm across the room does a great job. Um, oh, yeah. especially if it's terrible and you're worried about like waking someone else up. I did that when I worked night shift because yeah. the only shift I've missed in the past 10 years is like one on night shift and for obvious reasons, right? And it's, it's a terrible schedule. And I used to set this like old school Looney Tune style clacker alarm yeah. across my room <laughs> and like either got up or I got to really piss my roommate off. So yeah. that's yeah. what you get. I'm usually getting kicked by my wife, like, you're long. So, all right, I'll get up. Like, by the time I make this huge drive to the bathroom to turn it off, it's kind of like I look over, I see, you know, my running stuff. I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you.
And I appreciate uh, all your help and guidance and uh, to help me push me to this goal that I had and uh, uh, a lot of fun working with you and just super easy to work with you. And I always, uh, you yes. know, I appreciate time that. change didn't really, you know, or time difference never was a hindrance, you know, to, I think either one of us. So uh, that was what were two, two time zones apart or something. Yeah, two. But yeah, man, I mean, it's the nice thing about, as you said, the internet's a cesspool, but also great. And this is the yeah. kind of great part about it. You can get a lot done from not that, not that close. So, yeah. Well, cheers, dude. I appreciate it. Hang out for one sec. Everybody else, yeah. thank you so much for listening. And we'll be back with another one soon. Thank you for listening to the show. To be clear, I'm not a doctor nor a registered dietitian, and nothing you heard was medical advice. You should always speak with a qualified medical professional before making any changes to your training regimen. If you enjoy the podcast or found it useful, please take a couple seconds to give it a rating or share it with a friend. Every little bit helps. And if you want more of this information, please head to the Trail and Ultra Running Nutrition Group on Facebook. You'll be in good company with other like-minded people who like to do hard stuff outside.